there in this video i am going to explain basic concepts about the sfc language such as a step transition action and so on then i will start a practical project using factory io let's start the video by creating a new standard project in the sfc language Here you can see the simplest program in the SFC. The three important parts of this language are steps, transitions, and directed links between steps and transitions. I can easily right click to add another step with its transition. Also, steps and transitions can be added from the right side list. Pay attention, after each step, the transition should be entered. Otherwise, code sys detects it as an error. Transitions determine when the program execution should exit from one step to another one. For example, based on the current program, the first transition is always true, so the controller will exit from the first step to the next one immediately. Now let's define a boolean variable for the second transition. Assume the program execution has reached this step whose name is step 0. Now if the tr0 variable is equal to 0 or false, the controller will remain in step 0. Every time the content of tr0 variable changes to 1, the controller exits from step 0 and go to step 1. Similarly, let's use two Boolean variables for the next transitions. Note that logical expressions whose results are Boolean can be used too. As you can see, at the end of the sequence, a jump instruction has been used. Now it refers to the first step, so this loop will be repeated. I can remove the jump instruction and also change its destination. Let's select step 0. Now the controller is going to repeat these three steps continuously. Note that for each sequential function chart, one step should be defined as its initial step. The program execution is going to start from there. The initial step can be changed easily by right-clicking on the desired step and selecting the init step option. Note that the initial step has a ticker border. On the right side, you can see some elements that you can use to construct your SFC program code. Also, any transition or a step can be selected to view or change its properties on the right side. For example, let's define a minimum time for the initial step. As a result, although this transition condition is always true, the controller will stay in the initial step for at least 10 seconds. Let's continue. For each inserted step, you can define some actions for the controller to execute. As you can see, there are four different types of actions. The main action is added here. CodeSys executes the main action when the step is enabled and any entry actions have already been processed. Another type is exit action. CodeSys executes this action one time when the step is deactivated. On the left side of each step, its entry action can be added. It is executed when the step is activated before the main action. Well, the last type is IEC action. This type of action 
is executed according to their qualifiers. IEC actions are executed two times. First, when the step is activated and second, when the step is deactivated. Let's continue the video with the last type of action. For each IEC action, a qualifier should be selected. Here you can see all of them. These three qualifiers whose names are non-stored, reset and set are more common than others. This one can be used to reset a boolean variable or digital output to zero. Note that several IEC actions can be defined in one step. The controller executes them from top to bottom. Let's define two more variables and reset them at the initial step. Now, let's use another qualifier for the next step. Well, this qualifier S can be used to set a Boolean variable to 1. It works like the set pin of the RS instruction, which I explained already. Another common qualifier is N. It turns on an output when its corresponding step is enabled and turns it off when the program execution exits from the step. Note that when a set instruction is used to turn on an output, usually a reset instruction should be used to turn it off. So let's use the R qualifier to reset the A variable. All right. Let's change the current sequence structure a little by using a branch. We can create a parallel or alternative sequences by using branches. This is an alternative branch. Codices processes only one of these branch lines at a time, depending on the preceding transition condition. Note that when alternative branches are used, a transition should be defined at the beginning and end of each branch. Now let's press the Ctrl plus Z keys on the keyboard and add a parallel branch. Note that only one transition should be used before and after a set of parallel branches. All these branches are going to be processed at the same time. Now let me test the current SFC program using the simulation option. As you can see, the initial step has been enabled. Let's run the simulator. Based on my settings, after 10 seconds, this transition is true. The controller exits from the initial step and it goes to the step 0. At this step, based on the defined action, the PLC has enabled the A variable. Now let's activate the exit transition. I need to change the state of TR0 from false to true. As you can see, the two steps of the parallel branches have been enabled and based on these two actions, the B and D variables have been enabled. If the controller exits from these steps, the state of these variables are changed to zero. Now, let's go to the last step, which will disable the A variable. Note that at the end of the sequence, a jump instruction has been used which directs the program execution to a step 0. So, if I enable the last transition, the controller will jump to a step 0. As a result, all parts of my program except the initial step will be executed again. Alright, 
Let's turn off the simulation mode. Now let's change the parallel branch to an alternative branch and test the program to check out its performance. Again, let's test the program. Well, after 10 seconds, step 0 will be enabled. After this step, there are two branches with these two transitions. When I enable either of them, the controller exits from step 0. Let's enable this transition. As you can see, only the right branch has been enabled. Now, neither of these transitions affects the sequence. Let's activate them. As you can see, by activating this transition, code sys doesn't execute a step 1. Also, if I enable this exit transition, code sys doesn't go to the next step since the controller is executing the right branch. So, to exit from the current step, I need to enable this transition. All right, let's exit from the simulation mode. Now let's see how the help window can help us to learn the SFC language. Now let's go to the SFC section directly. Here you can learn basic concepts related to the SFC language. For example, here you can see all valid qualifiers. Remember, I have used these three common qualifiers. Note that some flags can be enabled for each step. Flags are implicitly generated variables with predefined names. For example, they can be used to display a timeout or reset a step sequence. Finally, in this section, you can learn how to use the SFC elements such as steps, transitions, branches, and macros. All right, let's do a simple project. Here is a simple SFC program similar to the previous one with these variables. Now, I want to show you how I can rewrite it using a structured text language. So let's create a new POU whose language is a structured text. First, let's copy and paste these variables into the new POU. Also, I will need an integer variable like a state to determine the current step inside the new POU. Let's use a zero as its initial value since on the left side the step zero is selected as the initial step. As I mentioned earlier, the state variable determines the activated step. If its value is equal to zero, the controller should enable the A variable and if either of these transitions is activated, the controller should exit from the step 0 and turn off the A variable. Note that if I enable this transition, I mean if I change the trans 0 to 1, the controller should go to the step 1. Otherwise, if trans 0b is enabled, step 2 should be executed. As you can see, I can easily use the if statement to rewrite my SFC program. In my program, 
The state variable determines the current step. Similarly, I can use another if statement to write a program corresponding to another step. But let's use a more efficient structure using the case instruction. You can learn how to use it from the help window. As you can see, there are four steps from step 0 to step 3 inside the SFC program. Respectively, I am going to store numbers 0 to 3 in the state variable. As I mentioned earlier, when the state variable is equal to 0, this part of my program can be used corresponding to step 0. Now let me clear this extra part and then complete my program. Please pay attention to the arrows to understand my program logic in the structured text language based on my SFC program. All right, let's compile the program to ensure that there isn't any error. Note that I used this variable and rewrote SFC program using the structured text language. Similarly, I can rewrite the program in CFC, FPD or the latter language. All right, I explained the five standard languages and did some projects using those languages. Now, I am going to explain some important points related to the SFC language. After that, I am going to start implementing a practical project using Factory IO. All right, I have created a new project in SFC. Now let's define some new variables. Okay, I introduced four types of actions, but I only used the IEC actions. Now, I am going to see how the other three types, which are main, entry, and exit actions can be used. First, let's define a main action. One of these two modes should be selected. They determine the duplication mode for the selected step. Let's continue with the first mode. I am going to explain them later. As you can see, I can define an action. On the right side, I can change the action name or its language. Now I can write a program similar to those that I wrote in the previous videos for example, I can use the initial step to reset the variables. Okay, I have created this action for the current step. It will be executed as the main action when the step is activated. Note that this small triangle indicates that a main action has been selected for the step. Also on the right side, we can see which actions are executed as the main, entry, or exit actions. For now, only int active has been selected as the main action. Similarly, you can define entry and exit actions. Remember, CodeSys executes the entry action one time after the step is activated. Then, the main action is executed continuously. And finally, the exit action is executed one time when the step is deactivated. 
Now let's see what the duplication mode is. Remember, I have selected the first mode for the current step. Now if I duplicate it, the new step is going to use the same actions. Now let's test the second mode. As you can see, the action has been changed a little and also if I duplicate the step, the new action will be created too for the new step. Well, let's press the Ctrl plus Z keys on the keyboard and also disable this mode. Now let's use the help window to get familiar with the two important groups of variables whose names are implicit variables and SFC flags. CodeSys produces them automatically. Here are some details about the implicit variables and the SFC flags. Implicit variables can be used to monitor the status of steps and IEC actions and SFC flags can be influenced the processing of an SFC diagram. Let's learn how an SFC flag can be generated. Similarly, you can learn how to use the implicit variables. For example, let's see how this flag SFC int can be generated. The first way is called the implicit generation of SFC flags. Based on the first two lines, let's open the properties window of my POU, whose language is SFC. Now let's go to the SFC settings tab. Let's disable the default settings and select the desired flags. Now I have selected SFC int and SFC reset. Although Codices has not displayed them, inside the declaration section I can use them like the other boolean variables. Just to check this point, let's use the SFC int flag here and compile the project. You can see that there isn't any error since I enabled the SFC int flag. Note that if the online mode is selected, the state of this flag can be seen inside the declaration section. Now let me create a new POU. Assume that I need to reset the SFC sequence using this flag from another POU. Alright, I want to reset the SFC sequence when my emergency button is pressed. Remember, this flag is defined for this POU and it does not belong to this one. So I need to write PLC PRG for the SFC flag. Naturally, the new POU should be executed. So let's add it under the task configuration. Now let's compile the whole project. As you can see, there is an error since this flag is not the input of its POU. So I cannot use SFC flags inside another POU using the first way. I can use the second way, explicit generation of SFC flags. If I need to use an SFC flag inside another POU. As you can see, here there are some examples that can help you to use a SFC flag inside a different POU. I need to define it as an input variable of my POU or as a global variable. Let's use the first way. Okay, I have defined this SFC flag manually as an input of my SFC program. Therefore, let's go to the SFC settings tab to deactivate its declare setting.
Now let's compile the program. As you can see, there isn't any error. Therefore, from this POU, I can reset the sequence to its initial step. I'll use the SFC flags in the next practical project. Now let's see how a complex condition can be used for a transition. As you can see, I can directly write simple conditions in a structured text. But if you need to write a more complex condition or to use another language, a transition should be defined and to be called like the actions. Note that the selected name for the transition is used as its output. All right, let's write a simple program. Pay attention. The result of conditions should return a Boolean variable. As I mentioned earlier, the name of a transition should be used as its output variable. Well, based on the inserted AND logic, when these three variables are enabled, this transition will be activated. Therefore, if I use it here, Codices is going to exit from the initial step and go to step 0 when the three variables are enabled. Let's compare the SFC language with the others. Usually, usage of the SFC language is suitable for a group of tasks that must be done in a specific order. Other languages, especially ladder and FPT diagrams, are suitable for the tasks which should be implemented independently and continually. Note that on the right side, all conditions are checked during each scan cycle. In consequence, all of them should be written exactly in contrast to the transitions on the left side, which are normally simple and short, because the controller needs to check a few conditions related to one step. Note that any language can be used to write a program. It depends on your willingness and ability. Remember, an SFC sequence was rewritten using the structured text language. Now let's use the SFC language to implement a practical project related to this automated warehouse inside factory army. As you can see, there are several tasks in a specific order to receive boxes and put them into the racks. When I press the stop push button, based on my program that I am going to explain about it, the crane is supposed to stop after reaching its initial state. I need to press the start push button to start the automated warehouse system. Now let me explain the necessary steps to implement the automated warehouse. The first step is using factory I.O. to design the system. Like the previous videos, I have selected a predefined project, automated warehouse. 
Now let's get acquainted with the important actuators and sensors. As you can see, on both sides of the crane, there are two conveyors. Also, there is a sensor at the end of the first conveyor to detect boxes. The main equipment is the stacker crane. It has three digital actuators whose names are lift, forks right, and forks left. Let's test them to see their performance. <laughs> To move boxes along the racks, this actuator and sensor should be used. Let's see how they can be used. The actuator works based on an integer number from 0 to 55. Rack numbers start from 1 and end with 54. Number 55 determines the initial position to receive boxes. Now the tenth position has been selected. As you can see, this sensor moving X is enabled due to moving the step. Note that to stop the crane, number 0 should be entered and number 55 when the crane should go to the initial state to receive boxes. Remember that I can connect its sensors and actuators to code sys via an OPC server. Now let's do the connection process and start programming steps. Okay, let's create a new project in SFC. Now let's change the name of this POU. We may use any arbitrary name for it. Now like in the previous videos, let's create a global variable list. I select FIO as its name to define all variables to be connected to the equipment inside factory IO. All right, I defined these variables. Now let's connect them to the equipment. First, I need to use the symbol configuration option to determine the variables that I can share them with the other devices. Well, the FIO list is not visible inside the symbol configuration window because I have not used any variable from this list. Let's use one of them to resolve this problem. Now I can see the FIO list. Let's select all of the defined variables. Now let's run this controller and download the current project onto the controller. Remember that during the previous videos, I explained the connection process in detail.
Now let's open Kip Server EX software. Notice that I defined these tags based on the defined variable inside the FIO list. Notice that all of the variables are either true or false because none of them is connected to any equipment yet. First, let's check the connection quality between the controller and KEP Server EX software. Okay, the connection quality is good. It means the defined variables inside the FIO list are connected to these tags. Now let's connect the tags to the equipment inside factory I.O. Note that, like in the previous videos, I have used these three letters, FIO, before all tags inside KEP Server EX software. Now, I can use the FIO letters to search and find my tags. Now, let's connect the equipment to these tags. All right, I created the connection between factory I.O. and code sys. As you can see, the state of some variables such as these two sensors have been changed based on their normal state in factory I.O. Now let's start the programming steps. First, let's create another POU that it will be executed beside my SFC program to control its sequence. Now I am going to use an RS instruction to change the state of a variable using the start and stop push buttons. Actually, this variable running mode is going to indicate if the warehouse system is going to be in running mode or not. Well, here I need to use the OR logic because besides the stop push button, the emergency and the reset push buttons are supposed to shut down the warehouse system as well. Remember, both the stop and the emergency buttons are normally closed. Therefore, I need to invert the states inside the program. All right, let's open the other POU, SFC PRG. First, let's use the running mode variable as the first transition condition. Now, if the running mode variable is enabled, the controller is going to exit from the initial step. In the next step, loading, the two conveyors should be activated to move any box to the crane. Note that when any box reaches to the end of the load conveyor, the state of this sensor changes to zero. In consequence, its inverse state can be used to exit from the loading step. Now the crane is going to lift the box. This process includes three steps. First, the crane should open its forks to the left side. So my program should activate the forks lift actuator. Note that the forks must be under the box. Therefore, the lift actuator must be off or inactive.
Well, the sensor whose name is at left can be used to detect the time the controller must take the next step. In the next step, the lift actuator is going to be used to lift a box. Now, the falling pulses from the sensor whose name is moving Z can be used to determine the time the controller lifts a box completely. Instead of that, let's determine a constant time for this step. This step receiving 2 should be executed in about 2 seconds to lift a box completely. OK. Let's create the next step. To complete the receiving process, the controller should reset the fork's left actuator. Like the previous step, let's set a fixed time to execute the third step of the receiving process. OK, these three steps receive a box from the conveyors. They can be considered as one step. So let's create a micro and define receiving as its name. Now let's move the three steps into the created macro. Note that you can either use a macro or not. It doesn't change the logic or sequence of your program. Now I have a macro in my program including the three receiving steps. Let's compile the program to ensure there isn't any error and then continue the programming steps. After receiving a box, the next step is transporting the box to an empty position. First, I need a variable to determine any empty position. Note that the position can be a number from 0 to 55. So it's wrong to select bool as its data type. I'll correct the data type in the next compiling. Pay attention. The initial value of this variable is 0. Its value should be increased by one unit before transporting each box. Therefore, let's use an entry action for this purpose. As you know, the interaction is executed only one time and based on the current program, the stored position in this variable is going to be increased by one unit at the beginning of the transporting step. As I mentioned earlier, I can use the actuator whose name is target position to determine the destination of the crane. So I only need to move the store number in the next position variable to the target position actuator. OK, based on the program, the crane transports its box to the stored position in this variable. Now let me create a new transition.
Note that when the crane is transporting a box, the sensor whose name is moving X is enabled too. So I can use a falling edge detector to determine when the box reaches its final position. Let's compile the project. As you can see, there are some errors in my program because of this wrong data type for the next position variable. Let's change its data type from bold to word to resolve the errors. Now there isn't any error. Until now, I wrote the code for the three important steps including loading, receiving, and transporting. After reaching a box to its final destination position, the inverse of the receiving process should be performed to place a box onto an empty rack. Again, let's create a macro. It should include three steps to place the boxes onto the empty racks. First, I need to use the forks right actuator to move transported boxes to the right side of the crane. Note that the crane has a sensor whose name is at right. Its state is true when the forks are opened completely on the right side of the crane. So I can use it here as the transition condition. In the next step, I need to reset the lift actuator. Remember, I need to enable this actuator during the receiving step to lift a box. Well, this transition should be here. Like the receiving process, let's determine a fixed time for this step and the next one. Okay, after placing the boxes, the controller needs to turn off the fork's right actuator. Then the final step is to move the crane to its initial position to receive any next box. I need to use number 55 as the next destination for the crane.
Again, I can detect the falling edges at the sensor whose name is moving X as the transition condition. It means the crane is reached to its initial position. Note that these two transitions work similarly to recognize the time the crane is stopped. The first one detects the time the crane reaches a specific empty rack after the transporting step and the second one detects the time the crane reaches its initial position. Then the controller should go to the initial step to repeat the designed sequence all over again. Now let's compile the project to ensure it is error free. Note that if the running mode variable is true or 1, the design sequence is going to be repeated. In other words, if any of the emergency stop or reset push button is pressed, the controller remains in the initial step and the design sequence is not continued. Ok, before the simulating step, there is a simple and important point to make. The control POU should be executed beside my SFC program, which I explain it. Now let's simulate the warehouse project using factory I.O. As you can see, my program is working correctly. Note that if the stop push button is pressed, the process stops at the end of the current sequence. But what about emergency conditions? Remember, when the emergency button is pressed, the process should be stopped immediately. Since I press the stop push button, the running mode variable is now inactive. Therefore, I need to press the start push button to follow and run the designed sequence. Alright, let's test this extended program. I added only these steps to the previous SFC program. The main point is defining this flag and using it inside the control POU. As you can see, when either the emergency or the reset push button is pressed, this flag receives a pulse. In consequence, the controller jumps to the step which is defined as the initial step. After jumping, if the emergency button is pressed, this step is going to be executed. Otherwise, the controller goes to the reset step. The main function of the emergency step turns off. All the actuators 
immediately, especially the crane. The reset step does a similar function with a little difference. The reset step turns off all of the actuators beside the crane since it needs to return to its initial position immediately. Note that the sensor with the name of at middle needs to be enabled to move the crane. This sensor determines that the crane's forks are closed. In consequence, the crane can be moved. Okay, I already explained and tested the other steps. Now let's use the push button lights to indicate the state of the automated warehouse system. For the extended section, let's turn on the reset light. At this step, I need to press the start push button to start the normal sequence to receive, transport and store a box. So let's use a start light to indicate this step. Finally, let's turn on the stop light when the normal processing is running. Well, this step was the initial step of the previous SFC program. Now let's change its name to Normal Sequence. Okay, let's compile the project. Well, some errors are detected. This step does not exist in my program because I changed its name right now. So let's select the Normal Sequence step. Now let's test the project. During the testing process, I pressed the emergency or the reset push button to check the effects on the design sequence. Remember, the demo version of Kep Server EX software should be stopped and started every two hours, so you need to repeat the connection process. Now let's test the extended project. Let's press the emergency button. As you can see, the crane is stopped immediately. Now let's press the reset push button. Again, if I press the start push button, the normal sequence starts. Now, I go ahead and press the reset push button to check its performance. Let's press the start push button to start the normal sequence. Notice that when I press the emergency button, the crane stops immediately. Let's disable the emergency condition and use the reset push button.
Note that I can extend the current project further. As an example, we can add a similar sequence to pick up the stored boxes to place them on the other two conveyors on the other side of the crane. I hope you enjoyed doing this automated warehouse project. Thanks for watching this video. I see you in the next one.